as the effects of COVID-19 are felt around the world. Real estate companies are being impacted in different ways, largely dependent on region and asset class. In the near term, real estate executives are concerned with preserving value and liquidity, keeping tenants and visitors safe, including increased cleaning measures and complying with governmental agency requirements. Mustafa Ewenla, Publicity Secretary, Association of Real Estate Developers, joins us. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much. How are you? Good morning. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thanks for asking. Now, how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected real estate business? Well, um, I think first off, it is very important that we uh, appreciate those frontline health workers who have done so well to uh, contain and curtail this virus. Uh, for me, I think some of them have practically sacrificed their life, which I think um, is quite commendable. But however, the real estate sector, just like every other sector, is definitely affected. But the impact of how far the effect is, it's exactly what stakeholders and professionals are concerned about at the moment. Currently, as we speak, a lot of webinars are being held online to dissect and banter on the sustainability of real estate investment post-COVID-19. So, Harry Pasu, an investor handle, Harry Pasu from a tenant angle. The impact of the virus is deep. Businesses are affected. Incomes are affected. People can no longer live as they were living pre-COVID-19. Companies are being shut down. As we speak, the there is a very alarming rate of rate of defaulters when it comes to rent payment. And that is a very obvious reason and a very glaring thing because of the COVID-19. As I speak to you, the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria is currently looking at ways to ensure that to ensure that mortgage loans will not be affected. Because as we speak, mortgage loans are also suffering because of the COVID-19. People can no longer pay their loans on their mortgage facilities. And a lot of stakeholders from the Nigerian Institution of Estates and Valuers to the relevant stakeholders in the government sector are also trying to brainstorm on how the effects will not be totally deep and will not affect the lives of people completely. But however, we are very optimistic that the real estate sector is still a very viable sector. I've gotten several phone calls from potential investors this week asking me, Ewenla, are you sure that we should still go ahead with, with this investment? Is it still going to be viable? Are we going to have off-takers? Are we going to have prospective buyers? And the answer is still a big yes in quotes. Because as of today, some have jokingly said that one of the known vaccine in quotes for coronavirus as we speak today is still real estate. Is because one of the precautionary measures is that you either stay at home or you or you play safe by wearing your face masks, avoiding social gatherings, maintaining the two feet, six feet, two meters distance in, in the public and all that. But generally, all over the world globally, real estate is still one of the solutions to curb the spread of coronavirus. All right, let's let's talk about the issue of rent, for instance. Um, we know in some other climes, some landlords are foregoing rent and allowing um, their uh, tenants to stay on. Uh, just the other day, we had a guest in the studio who talked about how the landlord increased her rent by 200,000. Now, most landlords are known now to be increasing their rent to cushion the effect of the pandemic on them on one hand, while inflicting pains on tenants. I want your perspective, yours personally, and that of your association. Yes, uh, thank you so much. That's a very vital question. For me right now, I do not think that any reasonable landlord should increase rent as we speak. And that brings me to a point where I think the government needs to step up and issue a circular to landlords to say that, considering what is going on globally, rent 
increment should be suspended till further notice. Countries like Kenya, the landlords have actually given tenants concessions not to pay rent for a certain time. Even in the United Kingdom, landlords are very compassionate to say, you either pay or I can give you some time, take your time. Because what is happening globally is common sense. Everyone can see it. There's nothing happening business-wise. People can no longer work. People, can, people are not getting paid. As I speak to you today, I, I lost count of tenants who are currently owing us. And we are not mounting pressure on them. Because even if you want to mount pressure on them, you can't take them to any court as we speak. No court is in session. You can't enforce any eviction on them. So we can only, we can only be compassionate with them and pray that we come out of this pandemic as soon as we can. As I speak to you, I've, I had a landlord who, gave, who called me a few days ago to tell me, Mr. Wenla, tell this tenant that for the period of March and April, I don't want them to pay rent because I understand nobody was, the economy was practically shut down completely, globally. So how do you expect them to pay rent, particularly for those who live from hand to mouth? So as we speak, I think the government needs to come up in that regard to say that rent for now, rent increment for now should be suspended or if at all, tenants for now should be given some sort of discount okay. and for then, paying but, rent. But right now, the incomes are definitely affected and there's no other means of survival. All right, I, I, I really hesitate to interject, but we have limited time on this segment. What are your expectations and what might likely change about real estate post-COVID-19? If you can give us your thoughts in 30 seconds, that would be great. Like I said, experts are very concerned and we are very also optimistic that the real estate sector is going to thrive. It's still a very viable sector all over the world. Whether we like it or not, it is definitely going to try with a lot of government support and support from relevant stakeholders in the built environment. So we are very optimistic. We are not pessimistic. We are very optimistic that the market will thrive. And there's still a lot of opportunities lying around for potential investors to come in and cash out from the, from the market. All right. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you so much for having me.